Having an actor for a father and a novel lover for a mother, you could say that stories in all their forms were a big part of my everyday life. And as a result, I grew an overactive imagination. I would constantly build new and magical worlds, create likable characters, give them problems and challenges, and I would join them on endless adventures. Yet as I grew older and life started to take its toll, I slowly started to lose parts of that. Only parts, though, because if you flash forward around three decades, you'd find me here today talking to you about this very thing. Eons ago, stories filled our lives. We didn't have the technology that we have today. Our stories were our entertainment, and our imagination was the only technology we needed to bring those stories to life. We, we were limitless. We sat by the fire and told stories. The Greeks and the Romans, they uh, expressed their myths on stage. The Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen spun out fables that we are still remaking uh, to this day. And let's not forget the tales that we heard from our parents who undoubtedly heard them from theirs. But today, our planet has grown too noisy, and in Lebanon, that is at times quite literal. Between the struggles of life, the overcrowded world of content, be it film or serialized, and the ever-growing toxicity of social media, our brains no longer have time to imagine, to understand, or to create. Instead, we spend our time building up walls and defending. It's sad, in a country that's so small and so connected, we've never felt more alone and insignificant. But what is most unfortunate is that our stories, our imagination, our creativity, seem to be constantly under attack. It is because of that that our stories, good stories, matter now more than ever. Everyone has a story to tell, but according to author Robert McKee, a good story is something worth telling that the world wants to hear. Now, between watching movies and TV shows, reading books, teaching screenwriting, and talking about film and television, my podcast, Script to Screen, I slowly started to pick up on three elements that kept showing up, like repeated patterns or motifs. The more I noticed them in the stories that stayed and touched not just me, but everyone around me, the more I noticed their lack in the stories that didn't. I recently dubbed them the three H's, and here's what they stand for. Hardship. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, hardship means severe suffering. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. Why on earth would hardship be something you should look for in a story, be it visual or literal? Well, the answer is simple. Hardship is universal. And it is that universality that allows the characters to feel more human and allow us, the audience, to connect to them. When Frodo first decides to travel across Middle Earth and go towards uh, Mordor in order to destroy the One Ring in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, little does he know that what lies ahead is going to be the most difficult challenge he will face. I mean, he gets stabbed by a cave troll, loses a mentor, gets betrayed by a close friend, then decides to leave all of his companions, all except for Sam, to go towards Mordor. And all this happens in the first film alone. In Star Wars, Luke must face countless obstacles, including learning that his father is the most hated villain in the galaxy in order to reach his full potential. Still not convinced? All right, let's do this. Bruce Wayne must learn to face his fear. Neo must believe. Harry Potter must overcome. Michael Corleone must accept his fate. Walter White must avoid the law. Annalise Keating has to get away with murder. And Jack Bauer has to stop a terror attack from happening before running out of time. <laughs> it is because of these challenges that we cheer those characters on and want them to succeed so that when they do, they offer us a positive emotional catharsis. And when they don't, they offer us a much needed wake-up call. 
What's important is not whether or not the character wins or loses, it's that the character tries. And that would not happen if hardship did not exist. Hardship allows us to care for the character's well-being. It humbles us, regardless of our nationality or religious beliefs or however we choose to identify. Just compare all the Lebanese films that have succeeded internationally to the ones that, well, didn't. From the hardships that befell four diverse Lebanese women, to the conflict between two Lebanese sects, to a young boy's quest to acquire an identity. These films broke through the barrier via the hardships that their characters faced, because struggle, in all its forms, does not play favorites, and nothing not even a wasta can save you from it. If you can please chuckle at that cheesy attempt at a funny moment, you'll help me perfectly transition into the next stage, humor. There we go. <laughs> Walt Disney once said, for every laugh, there should be a tear. And the reverse is also applicable. What humor does is offer the audience what writers call a taste of honey. Sounds fancy, right? Let me explain. Imagine you're swimming deep underwater in a pool and you slowly start to realize that your body is tensing up and you're in desperate need for some oxygen. So you quickly swim to the surface and inhale a big chunk before you dive back in. That's how writers use humor. But why is it important? Well, it's about balance. Humor in this case doesn't necessarily mean comedy. What it means is an uptick in the narrative, a positive beat. For every laugh, a tear. If we do this, we add value to each emotion because we'll never know the relevance of a positive moment until we're in a negative one. This is why some stories have characters that are categorized as the comic relief. Tyrion Lannister, a favorite among the Game of Thrones fan base, has seen, there we go, yeah, yeah, has seen his father brush him off, his sister wish him dead, the love of his life betray him, and yet he continued to joke, to drink, and to know things. <laughs> oh man. Um, and there we go. Humor is why we stick around, it's what hooks us, okay? In the final moments of La La Land, the two main characters um, get a flash of what if things were different, and we, the audience, get to live that positive outcome with them, only to be reminded that reality is not that at all. Balance. Okay, we'll do one more, and I'm sure you're gonna whoop for that one too, before we move on. Let's take a look at Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> a film that arguably decimated all of our positivity with a snap. All right, you're all still here, good, we can move on. The film is mostly hardships because the Avengers have to face off against their most difficult and apocalyptic challenge yet, Thanos, the master of the Infinity Gauntlet. And yet, even though the film is filled with darkness, light and humor still manage to find their way. Peter Parker and Tony Stark both offer some of the funniest banter, and let's not forget the epically hilarious moment when Thor meets the Guardians of the Galaxy. For every laugh, a tear. That's what humor is. And if you'll allow me to quote the headmaster of Hogwarts, it's a reminder that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times, if only you remember to turn on the light. Now the final age, and what I feel is the most important age, is heart. For what are stories and what is life without the pulsing heart? Heart relates to the unyielding spirit within the characters, the inner drive, and their willingness to never give up. We'll start with a local film for this age. Nadine Lebeke's Capernaum is a film that exemplifies heart. Zane, the, character, the main character of the film, has to face extreme hardships, including dealing with his negligent parents, losing his sister, begging on the streets of Beirut, living in terrible conditions, being jailed, and yet he carried on and believed that he would one day find a better life than the one that he currently has. 
In the Italian film, Cinema Paradiso, Toto has to fight his memories, his regrets, and his failures, all of which are defeated with a simple reminder that sometimes failures are blessings in disguise, a sort of la takrahushe message. It is the film's honesty, its childlike spirit of love, life, and dreams that allow us to fall in love with it and watch it again and again and again. Steven Spielberg's E.T. is the epitome of heart. Elliot has to fight off countless obstacles in order to save and defend this strange alien, a creature that some feared and most found incomprehensible. He had to believe not only in himself, but in the impossible in order to help E.T. find his way home. Heart is why we stick around. It's why we hold on. It's why we stay when all seems lost, even though we had a chance to turn back and escape the struggles that lied ahead. It's a film's ability to take you away from your troubles and force your inner child, uh, your, uh, sorry, force your adult self, not your inner child, force your adult self to take a back seat and allow your inner child to go fly a kite and let it soar high above the city of New York, across the lands of Middle Earth, past the second star to the right and to a galaxy far, far away. Because you see, when you use the three H's, you ultimately end up with a secret H. And that H stands for hope. Hope that the sun will come out tomorrow. Hope that love will survive. That evil shall not reign victorious. And that there is some good in this world. And it is worth fighting for. Stories aren't an escape from reality, but a ship that takes us on our search to better understand our reality. It's our best efforts to make sense out of the chaos of existence. With the utter darkness that is covering Lebanon and our world, we have never needed good stories more than we do today. Because you see, by telling these fantastic stories, that's how we'll win. Thank you. Thank you.